It's a fast track, ladies and gentlemen. Temperature is in the 70s. We could have a good old-fashioned high-scoring shootout at the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. The Ohio State Buckeyes, 9-2. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 9-2. Meet in this, the first of four BCS games. All will be broadcast in HD, presented by DLP Picture Technology. Ohio State fans have waited for this scene. Number 42 is in uniform. Broke his ankle. The final game of the season. Jim Trussell standing by with Jack Aroot. And Jack, what's the latest on Bobby? Can he go? Well, let's check with the coach. How much can you get out of Bobby Carpenter today, coach? Probably not much, but first of all, you need to stay in that no. collar. You're not looking sharp. Bobby's dressed, but probably won't play. So well, how will that impact the game, coach? Well, he's a, a playmaker, but we've got some guys, and, you know, we're going to have one less, but he'll be here in spirit, and he'll be yelling like crazy. Thanks for the stay. Okay, buddy. A real nervous head coach of Ohio State. Remember, he won a national championship here. So let me turn you loose on the two quarterbacks. Compare them for our audience. Not everybody's seen Troy Smith and Brady Quinn. Well, let's start, Brent, with Brady Quinn. From the first half against Pittsburgh until the last drive against Stanford, no one has thrown the ball better than Brady Quinn. He has won football games. He is unquestioned leader in the best passing game in college football. But in the second half of this football season, Troy Smith has broken out. You'd be surprised to know he's the sixth-rated passer in college football, and he beats you in a lot of different ways. Ohio State has ridded Troy Smith, and he can beat you with his arm and his legs. And, Gary, we will see Quinn with the first series of the game as the Buckeyes won the toss, and they deferred. Officiating crew is from the SEC, a good one. Josh Houston, who has kicked it in and out of the end zone all season long with the ball on the 35 and along the ground. It is fielded at the 18-yard line by an upback, and the Irish will start at about the 28-yard line. There's Brady Quinn over with the guru, Charlie Weiss. And so he comes out, and folks, notice 32 touchdowns and seven interceptions. What about defending Quinn here today, Gary? Well, remember, you're defending Quinn and Charlie Weiss. You must mix up your fronts and your coverages. If Brady Quinn knows where you are, Charlie Weiss will know where you are, and he will pick you apart. A lot of movement for Ohio State. Schlegel backs out of the line. And on first down, Quinn going deep. He's got Samarja open. And he couldn't hang on. At the 24-yard line, almost made a fingertip catch for the Irish on the first play of the game. Don't be surprised if Weiss goes deep again. Well, this is always part of the game plan for Notre Dame. They love to throw the post pattern. And all year, Jeff Samarja has made that catch. Ohio State just watched a guy run right by him, and it was their best cover corner. Ashton Yabodi, who watched the big guy, supposedly the possession receiver run right by him. Weiss scripts the first 15 plays, but he'll break out of it if he sees something else. Samarja on the flanker screen, run out of bounds on the near side at about the 35-yard line by Dante Whitner, the strong safety. So our Tostitos starting lineups on this uh, beautiful day here in Tempe. Stovall, Schwab, the fullback. Walker, underrated running back. Fizano, very talented tight end. Samarja, we've already seen. Key in on John Sullivan, folks, number 78. When he anchors the middle of this experienced offensive line, there are three seniors, and one of them, Dan Santucci, does have another year of eligibility if he wants to come back. But Sullivan leads it up. He'll call the line blocking, and Michigan State exploited the middle against the Irish, but they've been much stouter with number 78 holding court there. You can see they spread the field with four wide. There's the fake, and here comes Walker. So it'll be a first down for the Irish. Winter again making the stop, and this defense will be under fire today, one of the best in the country. Patterson, Green, Pitcock, and Kudla, Mike Kudla. Now the linebackers, here's the score. James Laranitis starts in place of the injured Bobby Carpenter, Schlegel and A.J. Hawk, 51 and 47, the other two. 
Yavoti, Sally, Whitner, and Tyler Everett, and they are going to be under fire from the Weiss attack. You NFL fans who happen to be watching college football today on this holiday, you'll recognize the plays from the New England playbook. Draw play. Walker breaks the first tackle. I mentioned, Gary, that he's underrated. Let's talk about Walker. Does not have that breakout speed. Not Reggie Bush. He's not going to take a play like that to the house. But he's going to pound away and pound away. And a terrific receiver. Well, that, that's the beauty of the running back in this offense. Darius Walker is a scorer. He broke the high school record in Georgia of Herschel Walker as a touchdown scorer in high school. Was, by the way, recruited by both teams. But he makes guys miss. Just like Tyler ever. Unblocked. Came on a safety bliss he makes guys miss and that's why he's so valuable in this offense well we uh we talked to uh, notre dame quarterback brady quinn about reading defenses for charlie weiss i think i'm at the point now where i'm recognizing you know, many different defenses coverages things that defenses are trying to do uh you know that helps you kind of get through your progression quicker you know having five guys to look out on every play can be tough and although some plays, you know, you have to go through the entire progression, but others, you, know, you can, you know, cross a few guys off just based off coverage. And his running back picked up the first down, so two carries at 19 yards for Walker. Tight end split very wide. That's a different formation for Notre Dame. Way down. Great job by the offensive line. Stovall at the 20-yard line. And let's talk about how tall these receivers are. Both of them 6'5", Gary. You bet. But when they're that wide open, they can be 5'6". Exploiting this defense is what Charlie Weiss likes to do. But Brent, right down here is where they like to go to the tall receivers. They like to throw the fade. And you can see Samarja, Stovall, and the tight end all have that height advantage. Just on the edge. Of the red zone just outside the 20. And now they're in the red zone and Walker could score. Touchdown. 21 yard first. And Darius Walker stuns the Buckeyes run defense. The best in the country at stopping the run. And Charlie Weiss, the pass master, spreads the field and runs it against the Buckeyes, who are without number 42. One of those formations where they now have the fullback swap in the game. They spread out tight ends. Look at, they got a body on A.J. Hawk. Dan Stevenson blocked Hawk, and that's Sprung Walker. It's Patrick backhandling the kicking. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame strike first. Hang on, everybody. We're in for a high-scoring afternoon here at the Fiesta Bowl. Trust me, the Buckeyes and Troy Smith are going to move the ball. Well, let's look at the play behind the play here. This time it was Dan Stevens, a number there, 74, getting the A.J. Hawk. Watch how he rubs off, makes sure the tight end, the defensive end doesn't come in, and then picks off number 47. That is the game plan. Put a body on number 47, and that sprung him. 427 points, a Notre Dame record. The Charlie Weiss offense comes to college what a story is never played college football graduated from Notre Dame short and here comes one of the return twins they're gonna run a reverse fake it and it was Santonio Holmes as Gonzalez gave him the reverse look now Troy Smith who we think is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country folks look at this 14 touchdowns four interceptions 300 yards against Michigan Gary, he has improved dramatically. Yeah, he is a tough, tough football player. And the Notre Dame defense and Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator, will try to spy. I think Michigan made a mistake in keeping their spy guy too deep. They need to move him up and crowd the line of scrimmage if they spy because if there's any space, Troy Smith will beat you. Antonio Pittman, 1,000-yard rusher, starts off the game. Left side is Jam. Would not move, and Maurice Crum, whose daddy played for the Miami Hurricanes, our Tostitos lineup. You can see Ted Ginn Jr., many of you know about him. Santonio San Holmes, a junior, but he could be opting for the NFL after this game. 
There's that offensive line, and we will see Alex Boone up there, folks, as a third tackle. Doug Daddish will line up as a tight end in their jumbo formation. He's not an eligible receiver because of the number 50. Now they bring Nick Mangold as the ringleader coming up to the line of scrimmage. Fake to Pittman. Downfield, overthrew again with his first pass of the game. Now defensively. For Notre Dame, and here is the big question mark about the Fighting Irish. Can this defensive front hold up? The Buckeye coach is very impressed with number 66 and number 95. Abby Omri and Landry, the linebackers Hoyt Mays and Maurice Crum, who's already made a stop, and then the secondary. Can they hold up against Ian Holmes and Gonzalez? Tom Zivakowski, the tough youngster from Arlington Heights, a former Golden Gloves boxer. He can hammer you. But first, he's got to catch number seven and number four. Nickel backfield, Troy Smith from the gun. He's an outstanding runner. He's got the first down. Ohio State already behind, obviously, seven to nothing. But let's look what they want to do. They will spread the ball for speed. They will get wide formations, three wide receivers, and then they feel their wide receivers and speed along with Troy Smith will make a difference. The Notre Dame defense makes turnovers. They make plays. They are not a knockout defense. They're very good on third down. They must find a way to get off the field one way or another. So on 39, Troy Smith runs 14 yards. He was a high school teammate of Ted Ginn Jr. Ted Ginn's father, the coach of that team in the Cleveland area, running the option. Here comes Smith. He's down, and we asked Troy where he has improved the most. Probably off the field, you know, in the film room. Uh, the more and more you watch film, the game will slow down for you. You know, so my discipline within, you know, uh, setting and focus hours within the film room has helped me become a better quarterback. The one thing the coaches will tell you privately is that Troy Smith finally trusts them. And it is that trust and that relationship that has improved dramatically over the last year. Many people think that this Ohio State team would have had a much better chance against Ohio State had he been ready to start that night back in Columbus. Pittman with a jumbo, the third tackle in and nothing doing. Well, Troy Smith burned him the other way, but that time they did come to the right with the running back. From the shotgun, fires, reaching for the first down. The spot will tell us. He's got the right foot out front, but uh, it looks like it's just on the other side of that first down marker, that yellow line. So our, uh, our referee and Steve Shaw will call for a first measurement. Ambrose Wooden was the defender who was trying not to give up a first down on the play. Yeah, they eyeballed it and gave it to him. Jim Tressel is changing up formations to give him a little jumbo, give him a little spread. He's run the option on the one successful play. And then, of course, the scramble by Troy Smith on third down was the other successful run. Offensive line gives Troy plenty of time. Ghost deep gets wide open. Wide open, folks. Touchdown. Here we go. Get out the Addy machine. We're underway. 56 yards, and Ted Ginn Jr., the speedster, just blew past the secondary. Ambrose Wooden peeked into the backfield. He thought it was going to go to San Antonio Holmes, and then all of a sudden, the high school teammate from Glenville High School in Cleveland, quarterback to receiver, puts seven points on the board. Josh Houston, the extra point, the punter, A.J. Trapasso is the home. Ohio State and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame are deadlocked at seven. We've played less than five minutes, and both teams have struck. Notre Dame driving for a score. The Buckeyes go the long way. Now Troy Smith after turning it over to the Fighting Irish who did not come away with any points now has a chance to 
to come back and uh, move it about 86 yards. A first down on the 14 yard line and uh, a uh, graphic that tells the story. Gary, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, he's been hot second half of the year, no doubt about it. Pittman. How about that? Ran the ball to the left and was successful. I think that crossed up that Notre Dame Irish defense. And that's the first successful design running play they've had for Ohio State. Second down and two. The Irish front. Still the three wide receivers. Gonzalez in the slot. Pittman for the first down. He has got it being wrestled down by Derek Landry. And he was a uh, the all Ohio running back coming out of high school. He has uh, he has emerged too. Uh, we've talked a lot about Troy Smith being underrated, but uh, Antonio Pittman out of Akron, six games with a hundred. Rush yards uh, this year, and uh, the officials uh, huddle down there with a uh, with a penalty. We'll get an explanation here on it. The result of the play was a first down for Ohio State. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 77 on the offense. The penalty will be half the distance. We the think Rob Sims, number 77, committed that. Personal foul. Take a look at this, Gary. Left guard, two-year starter at left tackle. Now at guard. This is the end of the play. Play is down. He puts his hands right into the face of Indukwe, number 18, the safety, and that was right in front of the fisher. Sims, a three-year starter. Interesting about Pittman, Brent. You talk about a tailback. We talked about how Troy Smith has emerged. Antonio Pittman didn't score his first touchdown until the eighth game of the season against Minnesota. Imagine that, a tailback at Ohio State not scoring a touchdown until the eighth game of the year. Draw play. And uh, the host of blue jerseys there. Tally leading the way. Tally shaken up late in the season uh, for Notre Dame, but able to uh, start today's game. Makes a difference with their, with their front. The final seconds tick away, quarter number one. The scoring was easy early, but not so easy late. While you're away, Charlie Weiss expressed his dissatisfaction with the offensive line and the fact that they did not protect Brady Quinn in that last sequence against A.J. Hawk. He's a very animated coach on the sideline. Uh, he gets right in the players' faces. Uh, he can be heavy-handed over there. And now... The Buckeyes with a second down and nine. Time high and, uh, and not a good pass. Well, the first thing that jumps out is how easily Notre Dame scored moving right down the field the first time. But then after that, they get a fumble in the uh, red zone, and they have been able to throw the ball against yeah, them. Yeah, uh, three things have popped out of me, Brent. First of all, the Buckeye defense isn't as flexible without Bobby Carpenter. They can't attack you as many ways as they could with him. The Notre Dame offensive line can fight and battle up front and at least get a draw with that good Ohio State defense. And Teddy Ginn is emerging as a receiver. He is running sharp routes out there. Here's your third and nine. Time for Troy. Dances to the right, can't find anybody open. Now he throws and again cut back beautifully. And it's first and ten. And Gary, just as you said that, it was like former high school teammates and fellows who have played together for a long time because Ginn picks it up for 18 yards. He reads Troy moving to the right. Now remember, Ted Ginn never played receiver in high school. He was a star defensive back and quarterback for Glenville High School. He's still learning to be a receiver, and you can see he's starting to get it. He ran a comeback earlier. Of course, he had the bomb. He could always do that, but he's starting to get the smaller, finer parts of being a wide receiver. Maurice Wells, number 34, is the running back. He replaces Pittman. Option, here comes Ginn, looking for a run. There was a great block on the edge. Look out. He's going to take it to the house, folks.
touchdown in second of the afternoon 68 yards off the option play Troy Smith goes to his right and then just flips it softly to Ted Ginn it's one block from Santonio Holmes, another one from Rob Sims. Big Daddish is out in front of him, and then he cuts back twice to finish. Prior to that touchdown, the longest one of the year for Ted Ginn, eight yards. Houston adds the extra point. And uh, of course, all the cheerleaders and... Uh, Support crews, bands enjoying the Tostitos Fiesta. Well, that tells a story, folks. Notre Dame had 72 yards on its first drive and only 82 cents. The Buckeyes are averaging 9.6 yards a play. So the Irish will have to pick it up against this tough defense. Nothing doing again. Schlegel cleans it up that time. And Notre Dame facing a third and nine. Too low. Samarja has been uh, wrapped up. Three catches, 22 yards is all. Averaging uh, just a tick over uh, seven yards a catch. And the Irish being forced to punt again. And you wonder if the frustration is mounting for Coach Charlie Weiss after uh, what seemed like a pretty routine opening drive. And not much going his way since then. And D.J. Fitzpatrick on the field. And the Twins are back. Ted Ginn and Santonio Holmes. Standing on the Buckeye 10-yard line. Third catch signal by Holmes. He'll let it roll down. Tap back. That is legal. It is the football in the college game. Not where it is tapped by a member of the uh, punt team. So if it did not cross the goal line, and it does not appear to right here, snapped back. Downed at the two-yard line, a 48-yard punt and dangerous, dangerous field position for Troy Smith and the Buckeyes. Area of coverage, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, reminding you to get superior traction in any weather with Goodyear's new Forterra triple tread tires. And you look down at this gorgeous scene here in Tempe, Arizona. First down and 10, Smith. Just following Mangold, right, uh, right straight ahead on the first down. Downing and Sims, two guards on the other side of the uh, of the sun. It has been a chess match for Jim Tressel in this football game, offensively and defensively. Last time, Notre Dame had the ball on third down. Ohio State came with three linebackers, four down. They didn't even have nickel. And now, after the punt, they've got their power against power. No one giving in. No one showing their full hand in this match. Two tight ends, Hamby on the field at that right tight end. Pittman, not much doing. This is going to be uh, third and long. Smith on third down, and there was a whistle just prior to the snap. So both teams broke out scoring in the early going. Now we've got 313 to go in the first half, and uh, we have had 21 points or three touchdowns. Please keep the lower camera off the field of play. The play was stopped. The camera was on the field. We'll replay third down. Fourteen seven. Smith's going to take off. Can he get the first down? Struggling for it. Got it. Easily. Landry. And that's exactly what Charlie Weiss told us is the most one thing he did not want to happen. If Troy Smith is going to run the ball, let him run it on first and second down. 
third down scrambles are demoralizing to a football team and it's exactly what Troy Smith did here. No pressure, no lanes, and Troy Smith picks up a first down. Troy Smith throwing and running has more yards than the entire Notre Dame offense right now. He alone has outgained the Irish. On first down, going deep, got Holmes. In a foot race for the end zone. Touchdown. He almost started that celebration a little year too early. There is a penalty flag on the play. He's going to get a celebration penalty going up into the end zone with deserves his finger it. out. That time, this he one, did. <laughs> this one he deserves. We had one in the Michigan game, which uh, we weren't convinced that he deserved when he dove into the end zone. And this time, he actually could have cost himself he a touchdown because he could have slowed down a step as the uh, defensive backs were closing in. But regardless, uh, the Buckeyes have their, and, and you can see uh, the coaches, it's a little bit of tough love down there. Great going, great going, San Antonio, but don't celebrate too early. <laughs> yeah, he's healthy finally. Said he was playing 65% all year on that sprained foot. He had it from August all through the year. He's a tremendous route runner, but that time, I agree, that ball could have been poked out from behind and a, almost a disaster on the play. Zibikowski could have got that thing. Now this is... Number seven on the offense. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Now, I wonder if he's got the wrong number or again did something, too. Could have been. Could have been a double, huh? But I think it was Holmes. I do, too. I... <laughs> Teddy, Teddy, I think, is saying, what I do? I, I just think. Well, I know Jim I, Trestle went right to Santonio San Holmes and said, you can't keep doing that to me. Josh Houston adds the uh, adds the extra point. But let's take another uh, look at, at uh, Santonio San Holmes and watch as he pulls away. Well short of the end zone. He'll raise his finger in the yeah, celebration. Zipkowski almost got it, didn't he? Yes, he did. He yeah. almost got that. Here's the key. Watch Troy Smith duck his head. It's a play action pass. Stan White Jr. comes in, and Duke Way thinks it, it's a run, and all of a sudden, Santoni Holmes right down the middle of the field. The ball is thrown perfectly, and Holmes almost gets in there with the ball. Here it is. Here's the safety they're playing. Comes in, and then right by him. Watch this. Great play action pass. And Dukeway gets his nose a little bit too far inside. Wooden stalls just a little bit right there. Number 22 in San Antonio Holmes. Takes it almost to the whole house without being touched. And the uh, the referee simply made a mistake on the number. It was uh, San Antonio Holmes who drew that penalty. That drive started from the two-yard line. That is a... 98 yard drive three huge plays the story of this game the big plays for the Buckeyes the 56 yard pass again the 68 yard run by again and then the longest touchdown pass in Fiesta Bowl history 85 yards to Holmes from Troy Smith now you look at Troy Smith's numbers he's thrown for better than 200 yards and Quinn for less than 100. So we started the day saying there's another number 10 in this game, Troy Smith, and we think he's one of the most underrated all-around quarterbacks in the nation. When you go back and think about the two Michigan games that he has put together, one in Columbus and one in Ann Arbor, and if Lloyd Carr was seated right here and we said to him, what was the difference in those two games, without hesitating, he would say number 10. No question about it. First down and 10. I think Ohio State would like to have another shot at Texas with a in-season Troy Smith. He is ready to play now. He had that alteration at the beginning of the season. Wasn't in the rotation as a starter just halfway, and now he's ready. Here comes the blitz from the corner. And it was Whitner, the safety, who came off the corner and deflected it. And it'll be second down and 10. And the Irish are going to be forced to regroup. This, since that opening drive, folks, is an old-fashioned Buckeye butt-kicking. And I'll tell you, that is a 101 blitz for Ohio State. They've been running this blitz all year. Right off the slot, Dante Whitner, strong safety blitz, zone away from it. No real 
flash and dash. Nothing Notre Dame hasn't seen. It's just Ohio State has got their gear going now. Second down and 10. And Walker juggling. Schlegel there incomplete. Stay tuned for the Tostitos uh, Creating Connections halftime program coming up here. And uh, if you go back to Charlie Weiss's play calling after the turnover inside the 15 yard line, if you want to do any second guessing, go back and get the play by play sheet out there. We tried to get the first down and was stuffed down there. And then they couldn't throw for it on fourth down. That would be the sequence to look for when they had a golden opportunity. Third down and 10. Quinn forced out of the pocket, throws, deflected, and complete. Yavoti is uh, over there along with Tyler Everett, number six. I'll tell you, Matt Shelton could have, should have caught that football that was right in his face mask. You got to make those plays. Your team is under a, a wave of blitzes, and all of a sudden your quarterback comes out of the pocket and throws a strike, and Matt Shelton, the senior, can't bring it down. Charlie's going to have to decide what kind of love to use the rest of the way. What he's going to do at halftime is going to be very, very important with this football team. They're going to have to regroup. Ted Ginn again, folks. <laughs> kind of collided with O'Neill on his own team, dancing and, uh, and looking for daylight. In that conversation that uh, Gary Danielson mentioned that we had with uh, Coach Weiss, uh, I said to him, I said, uh, Coach, I think you're going to be looking at the best defense you've seen all year. Without hesitating, he said to me, have you looked at Tennessee? Have you taken a look at him? I said, no, I really haven't. I concede you that. But I went back and I looked at him, Coach. Right now, you're playing the best defense you've played all year, my friend. Right now. 21-7, you got 147. And let's see what you make of it. Your average per play is almost 12 yards per play. Look at that. The big plays have gone to Ohio State. Complete again. Again, out of bounds. The passing clinic is being put on by the Buckeyes. Well, there is fear right now in the corners for Notre Dame. Wooden and Richardson, 22 and 30, do not believe they can match up with the speed from Ohio State. Those are easy pitching catches. Set the quarterback coach Joe Daniels down on the field for the game. I said, Coach, uh, do you think you can attack the corners? You know, he's kind of a low-key fellow, does a great job, uh, kind of under the radar. He said, yeah, yeah I think we do. Uh, we'll see how they play us, how they try to match up, but I think we can we can do some business over there. And they have indeed. Smith has thrown for 219 yards in the first half. And more. And that's the tight end, Marcel Frost, making his first grab with Richardson. And just look at the throws. I mean, there's no high balls and low balls and receivers reaching back to the right and the left. So far in this football game, when that ball is thrown to receiver, it's hitting them in the numbers, the face mask, and the hands. Troy Smith, 10 for 13, and he's throwing strikes on those 13 balls. The Big Ten had been struggling, and then Wisconsin struck today, earlier in the, in the bowl game down in Orlando, upsetting Auburn, slant. Holmes, Holmes to the 37-yard line for a first and 10. Inside of a minute, they have a great field goal kicker. Let us remember that right now. Of course, they're thinking touchdown. And uh, an injured Irish uh, Irish player down on the field. That is number 40, Maurice Crum, the linebacker. So the Buckeyes of Ohio State, they just love this venue. Got an Irish lineman to jump, but there's the whistle. Linesman uh, stopped the play. And let's see if Landry was pulled offside. Might have made contact, and uh, and they stopped it. Dead ball, offside in the middle of the defensive line. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. The strategy for Ohio State to spread the field and use their speed has paid off handsomely. 21-7.
it is just obvious up here watching this. This is what Jim Tressel has hung his game plan on. Put his three, four, five wide receivers on the field, spread them out. Look at Roy Hall right here. He's got a great matchup with no safety in the middle of the field. Here comes Troy keeping it again in the middle of the field to the 21 for a first and 10, stopping the clock with 33 seconds. And with Houston over here on the sideline, I believe a timeout has has, uh, has been called. And uh, look at look at that difference. Look at the difference of him as a quarterback right now. He knows what he wants. He's telling receivers how to run their routes. He's a full quarterback. Well, over on the uh, sideline, you may have noticed the long hair on the part of the uh, linebackers, and it, it brings us to a uh, to a fine story down here in this part of the country. And uh, let's join Jack Aroot for that. Guys, we've talked a lot all season about the long hair that the Buckeyes linebackers have been wearing. Well, part of the story is that it's a tribute to someone that they think they want to pattern their style of play after. Pat Tillman, who played here in Sun Devil Stadium and then went on to NFL fame and, of course, lost his life in the war in Afghanistan. Kind of an opportunity for these linebackers to pay tribute to Pat Tillman and make that tribute come full circle today. Indeed, uh, Jack, and there's uh, Schlegel and the... Uh and Hawk, uh, both of them. Uh, Schlegel, for example, said that his wife uh, would like him to cut his hair, and Hawk says his mother would like him to cut his hair. But it's a it's a wonderful tribute to uh, to a tremendous American, Pat Tillman. I had the pleasure of covering uh, some of Tillman's football games when he was down here at uh, Arizona State, and he was a he was a great great warrior. And it's first down and ten. Smith is. Uh, He's emptied out the backfield again. Just firing to Gonzalez. Gonzalez makes a cut. Zibikowski couldn't get him down. There's a penalty flag. Yeah, I had him in the face mask. On with yes, the face he mask did. Penalty yes, here. he did. The 10 yard line, so that'll cost him even more yards with 26 seconds. And the Irish trying to hang on. They would be happy for a Houston field goal right now and uh, not give up seven. The Buckeyes, meanwhile, they're going to take a crack at the end zone here for a time. And, and it saved Ohio State at their last timeout also with 25 seconds to go. Troy Smith was running to call timeout, but the penalty canceled it. There were two fouls on the play. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. The slot back was covered up by the wideout, therefore he's ineligible. Face mask on the defense, number eight. Those penalties offset will replay the down, first down. Number nine was guilty of the uh, of the face mask. Yeah, and that time Anthony Gonzalez lined up on the line of scrimmage. He needed to back up, so he made his own mistake. Twenty-five seconds, first down and ten. Line of scrimmage back outside the twenty-yard line. Troy Smith just empty in the backfield. The offensive line doing its job. Troy on the move Ooh. and. Uh, Dangerous looking yeah. pass uh, bounced, and uh, Smith obviously uh, wanted one of his receivers to uh, do something differently than, uh, than what he did. 12 seconds left now with a, uh, with a second and 10, and of course, still well within uh, Josh Houston range as uh, Troy checks the clock. Yeah, now remember, they got a timeout left, but he's pretty lucky right there, Troy Smith. If he'd have thrown that ball well over there to Teddy Ginn, that ball would have been intercepted. He's lucky he bounced it in there. Second down on the slant, and Santonio stops the clock with the first and ten and four seconds. And Houston is coming off that sideline, waiting for the signal. Timeout is going to be called, and uh, then they will get the field goal unit on onto the field. Brilliant drive by Troy Smith that time, managing the clock. Taking the easy throws, he only forced one. He was lucky not to get intercepted. And you can see Jim Tressel continues to attack. He knows Notre Dame has firepower, so he attacks. About 28 or 29 yarder coming up for Josh. Replaced Mike Nugent. Had an outstanding uh, season. Kicked five field goals in that loss against Texas. Missed a uh, 
50 yarder that uh, might have made the uh, the difference. You can see uh, six years. Redshirt with a knee injury. They backed up Mike. Then the hip injury. Backed up Mike a couple more years. And uh, here he <laughs> is having kicked 83% uh, field goals. And uh, he's a field position. He has that long leg from the 35. Many of his kickoffs have sailed in or out of the uh, end zone. He takes his time. And now he trots onto the field. So Paso will be the uh, the holder. They put it down there, and it'll officially be at a 28 yard. That was blocked. So you could see it. You could see from behind it in Dukeway, we believe, got through on it. Number 18, as time runs out. Let's go quickly to Jack Aru with Coach Weiss. All right, Coach, what do you want to see out of your team in the second half? Well, first of all, we have to play more consistently on both sides of the ball. You know, we, you know, we were sloppy on offense. You know, we gave up too many big plays on defense. You know, fortunately for us, it's only a two-score game. It could be a lot worse right now. Thanks, Coach. All right. Let's take a look at uh, in Duke way. Number 18 right there comes right inside. You must seal off inside. Ryan Hamby didn't seal off inside and that caused it. Guys uh, deferred so they're going to uh, receive here to start the second half and uh, we could be seen number seven or number four. They've been the, the two big play uh, men in case you just joined us. The Buckeyes have struck 56 yards 68 yards and 85 yards and the 85 yards was the longest touchdown pass in Fiesta Bowl history. Troy Smith to Santonio San Holmes. And this is Holmes coming out. A little cracking there at the 24-yard uh, line. And now we go to Jack Root for our Home Depot coaching adjustments. Jack? Well, guys, we heard from Charlie Wise saying that as far as his coaching adjustments, it was going to be all about consistency. For Jim Trestle, he was livid at halftime about the turnovers that Ohio State has committed. So his coaching adjustment, zero turnovers in the second half. We'll have to wait and see. Jack, I agree with Coach Trestle. You look much better with that collar stay. <laughs> Coach, the coach gave him one uh, at the start of the game. Uh, noticed that he wasn't wearing a warm collar. And uh, so uh, for those of you who might have missed that little byplay. First down and 10 for Troy Smith, who takes off on a uh, quarterback keeper here on the first down. You see the offensive line moving the pile. Let's take a look at our Nokia game summary, our first half statistics, and as you might imagine, Gary, uh, everything favoring the Buckeyes. Yeah, I, I think these third down conversions right here, that has been the key. I said that Notre Dame's defense had to find a way to get off the field. Now, a couple turnovers have got them off the field, but Ohio State has won that third down battle, and that is something that the Irish were really banking on to win this football game. Smith staying in the uh, Shotgun formation. Line holds incomplete. The intended receiver was number four, Santonio San Holmes, and Richardson was the corner there. That blocked field goal at the end of the half is what Notre Dame is hanging their hat on right now. Charlie Weiss told Jack, We're lucky this is just a 14 point game. Remember, Ohio State turned it over going in with a option play and then had that field goal block. Just a 14-point game keeps Notre Dame in it. Third down coming up. Buckeyes, remember, we just showed you that. Perfect on third down. His first catch of the game that time, and uh, Roy Hall was the receiver but Wooden was right there defensively and that forces a punt. I think Troy Smith went right past his read. This is an inside out read. The tight end right here Marcel Frost comes right in the middle of the formation and he's wide open for the first down right there. He claps his hands even right there and that would have been the easy first down. Troy came out wide. He passed up number one went to number two and it cost him. Trapasso's first punt and Zivakowski who has taken two back for touchdowns from the 26. Tough rascal, there's the penalty flag to the 39-yard line. So uh, 
looking for something to uh, ignite the uh, Fighting Irish. Nate Sally on the uh, special teams, uh, bringing down Zibikowski. Zibikowski, a Golden Gloves fighter, and a, and a pretty good one from uh, just northwest of uh, Chicago. This will be an illegal block against uh, the Irish, no doubt, and uh, bring it back. This is being very deliberate. During the kick, illegal block in the back, number 20 on the receiving team. That penalty will be 10 yards from the end of the kick, first down. Well, if we take a look at uh, what went on in the uh, the first half, and uh, you can see that uh, what is really out of whack for the Irish. There is seven completions, all of them to Zamarja and Stovall, and no touchdowns, and these two guys have been touchdown makers all year, and nothing against the Buckeye defense. And on first down, Walker on a slant. <laughs> Stepping out right at the first down marker, Ubote, the corner there for, uh, for Ohio State. This would uh, this would really uh, turn the crowd back around if the Irish could uh, march down and make this a seven point game here at the start of the the third quarter since that opening drive of the game Notre Dame uh, going 70 plus yards it has been all Ohio State pretty good play call on first down on the first drive Darius Walker was really involved in the game plan when they really had the Buckeyes off balance to start the second half with a run serves notice that we're not going to forget about our tailback. Now on first and ten, plenty of time off the play action and the throw underneath for a loss of yardage and A.J. Hawk, an almost certain first round draft choice come next spring, makes another stop. You know what I love about A.J. Hawk? There's just like no wasted motion in this guy. He doesn't look at that. Just flies to the ball, separates, gets in there, hits, wraps up. I mean, you could put a clinic watching this guy play linebacker. And uh, Malcolm Jenkins steps into the game. Here goes Quinn, very deep. Going to take off his receivers. Were covered as they closed in. Pitcock and Schlegel and... Uh, there's A.J. Hawk, and in case uh, you were not with us at the uh, top of the day, his girlfriend is Brady Quinn, the Notre Dame quarterback's sister, Laura, who's here today. And uh, we ask A.J., how did this romance get started? It goes back to, you know, we kind of had mutual friends a couple years ago that we first met, and then uh, she, came, she came back into town in Columbus uh, towards the end of the summer, and that's when I basically met up with her again. There she is, and half of that jersey, Notre Dame colors, Half uh, Ohio State, and uh, I think she's pulling for uh, for little brother to get something going here, make a uh, make a contest out of it. Here comes AJ, closing in on him, got him. AJ Hawk has just sacked his future brother-in-law, <laughs> and the future bride is saying, "Oh, don't don't hurt baby brother." The, the but then again, that was AJ. The, the left side that time is Ohio State runs the zone blitz. You get Kudla coming from that side, and then A.J. Hawk following up, and boy, I'll tell you, A.J. Hawk, that 4 4 5 40 speed, you saw him close. Remember, she uh, publicly with Jack Aroot picked Notre Dame to win it by a field goal. Fair catch by Ted Ginn. And the Irish, uh, the Bulls have not been kind to them. You've got to go back to the mid-90s down in the Cotton Bowl before you find the uh, the last win overthrown. And it is second down. So seven consecutive bowl losses. And uh, so twice, uh, he beat that drum all week long. Slant play. And to the midfield is number 82, Matt Shelton. That is only the fourth receiver now to catch a pass. That's 21 yards, and maybe, maybe that will ignite this Irish attack. Against Yabote, Ohio State is blitzing. Perfect throw from, uh, from Brady Quinn comes inside, and now look at this. Little no huddle from Notre Dame, trying to jump, start, 
that passing offense for Notre Dame. One score would make this a dogfight. 21 7. Brady will dive to the 45 yard line. That's a five yard gain for the uh, for the Irish quarterback. So you go back and uh, you know we've talked about uh, Notre Dame mistakes, but when you think about the Buckeyes, have had two field goals blocked and a fumble going in. Absolutely. Uh, basically, we're talking three turnovers where where exactly. you had a potential. Let it let us say both field goals for 13 if they had scored even three field goals, nine that they've left on the table down there. And uh, hit on Stovall on a slant. And on this play, Brady Quinn showed his courage. He showed exactly why he's got such upside. He knew he was going to take a wallop, and it still was a 13-yard gain for a first and 10. And here comes Mr. Quinn. Notre Dame and Charlie Weiss has gone to the three-step drop game. They're not blocking them very well. Schlegel was blitzing on that play. Ohio State and zone blitz four straight plays and have not got to Quinn. Couldn't hang on that time, and Samarja has been relatively quiet as Whitner hits him as soon as he touches the ball. Here's our Dodge defensive playbook. Well, and if you're going to talk defense, you got to talk this Buckeye defense because they have been aggressive and attacking. This is A.J. Hawk right there. Watch him come around. This is the sack. He drove Brady Quinn into the ground and kind of sprung that shoulder. It's been a little bit of that all night. Every time Brady Quinn has tried to take that five and seven step drop, Ohio State has been able to put pressure on him. Empty backfield. Quinn and the Irish. Incomplete. Intended for Fasano there in the middle. He was trying to uh, sit down. He was uh, he was very well covered. 5:30 out here in the uh, Mountain Time Zone. For Gary and Jack. I'm Brad. We certainly hope you had an enjoyable New Year's weekend and uh, you know a happy New Year and a great retirement. Uh, wish goes out to my old friend Dick Vermeil. Closed it out in style yesterday with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. They won their 10th game of the season, beating Cincinnati, and the old coach rode off in the sunset. Should wind up in the Hall of Fame. Well, caught inside the 20 yard line. And he's coming back now to Matt Shelton. Shelton has got two big passes. And working without a huddle and a little bit of a hurry Watch up. Darius Walker. He gets A.J. Hawk who tries to jump over him. That's what freed up Brady Quinn to throw that ball. Darius Walker sticking his face right into the All-American's knees. Yeah, the, uh, the All-American jumped his knees into it, didn't he? Got up high that time. And, uh, Short passing game. Again, now, and it's number 82 who is leading the way. Matt Shelton was replaced in the three receiver package by number 11, David Grimes. But now it is Matt Shelton who has come alive here for the Irish. And it's been all short, quick passes. You can see the adjustment. Ohio State's pressure has forced Quinn to go to the short passing game now. How will Ohio State adjust? Will they bring the house? Down here, they usually bring everyone. Short drop right at the 10 yard line and Jeff Zamarja is just hit as soon as he touches the ball. No yards after a catch as you Bodie all over the young man who's also an outstanding baseball player at Notre Dame a, uh, a right handed pitcher and, a, and I'm told that someday he may have a uh, decision to make when you when you watch him work. You think a little bit about Ricky Pearl the uh, wide receiver who's had such a great career in the NFL coming out of Wake Forest. He helped coach for meal with a Super Bowl with the Rams and has uh, moved on to Carolina. Uh, Zamarja reminds you of, uh, of Pearl although he's a little bit taller. He's in that slot area right now. And there's the call for the running play Walker touchdown again. His second of the game and we've got a ball game again. The best drive for Weiss and the Irish since the opening drive of the game. The Buckeyes left them in, and finally Notre Dame is able to answer. Watch the quick drop by Brady Quinn. You think it's a quick pass, and then he turns and hands it somewhat poorly to Darius Buck. Gets it, makes one guy miss, it's Nate Sally, and he walks into the end zone. DJ Fitzpatrick. Zamarja is his holder. 
How about this? How about this huge miss? Missed one against Stanford that one really got him behind. Missed. And that one cost him right there. Now an eight-point game. That whole drive was featuring a three-step drop. They take it into the end zone and just pushes it wide. We'll take a break. Scottsdale is uh, home to some of the uh, finest Western art in the world. This uh, one tremendous uh, gallery after another. We come back down. Fitzpatrick, who lost his job for a short time in that uh, Stanford game. And uh, now has uh, missed a, uh, an extra point that could loom very, very big. And this one out of bounds. He incurs the penalty there. Uh, Gary, let's check back in on our Dodge defensive playbook. And really the key for Notre Dame is can they handle the spread? Because this is Ohio State attacking the Notre Dame defense from the spread. They do a lot of things throwing all over the field, and this is utilizing that speed that Ohio State has in Ginn, Santonio Holmes, Pittman, with that spread formation has really kept that Notre Dame defense really, really guessing all night. The Irish uh, may have a problem looming with this kicking game. This is the first time all season that Fitzpatrick has taken a kickoff out of bounds. But on the other hand, the good news is Ginn nor Holmes handled it. And uh, so here's Smith firing to the far side, wide open on a missed tackle. And a great hustle by Zivakowski to catch again. Had the angle, and Zivakowski would not yield a touchdown. The spread formation has been the story of the game. You go out, Notre Dame is spread all over the field, pitch and catch, now a missed tackle by Wooden forces Zivikowski, who, by the way, is a 4-4-5 guy himself, the only chance with the angle to catch Ted Ginn. 44 more yards for Ginn. Just outside the red zone. And there's the former boxer. He calls the, uh, the defenses in that secondary for the Irish. Pittman is swallowed. Maybe even... Uh, lost a little bit on the uh, on the first down play the the one thing to go back on uh, on the spread that Gary talked about it's one thing to spread the field it's a second thing is to have a quarterback who is strong enough to be able to throw it all the way to the far sideline and Troy Smith in this game folks is 14 of 20 for 297 yards two touchdowns and no interceptions he has also run for another 63 yards he has well over 300 yards of total offense here today. And he's back in that gun again. Again, off a flanker screen, slips down. And it will be third and long. The Irish back-to-back -back plays have rolled the dice and blitz. Ohio State first time ran right into the teeth of it, and that time had a pretty good call with the wide receiver screen, and Notre Dame's pursuit stopped it. Here's Roy Hall checking in. He's caught one pass today. Third and long, and Ohio State doesn't want to line up in that field goal situation again, do they? They take Pittman out wide to the left, and here they spread it again with five wide this time on third down and long. Drops in over the middle of Gonzalez. He was bobbling it. And it's picked up by the Irish. There was no whistle that it was down. Zygakowski, here he comes. The fighter is well on his way. Touchdown. And there is a flag back on the 30 now. Hold on, it's on the Buckeye 30. It was an 89-yard return. Let us sort this out. It came during the return. It was never whistled down. I thought it might be an incomplete pass. When I first saw it and the ball left Gonzalez's hands, remember I was behind him, and Trestle uh, might be saying that to the alternate official on that sideline. There's a huddle down here now. 
And uh, of course, remember, we're using instant replay also. During the return, number 15, illegal block in the back on Notre Dame. It'll be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and 10. The pass went to Gonzalez on what they call a stutter in. He looked whether he caught the ball or bobbled it. Let's take a peek. He had it. If he would have caught it cleanly and ran, he had a touchdown. Catches it. One. Oh, no, he bobbles it a little. That's, you know what? Folks, that's an that, incomplete pass. That is going to be reviewed for sure because then he doesn't get it cleanly, and then all of a sudden, the return starts. One. Two, and then as he's bringing it in, he bobbles the football. Is it indisputable? That is always the question for the. Uh, and of course, he never had. It. He never had the official. fumble. If it is a fumble, looked like he caught it up high. When he tried to tuck it, he lost the ball. Retired SEC referee I think they're going to call this an incomplete pass also Brent I agree with you you have to tuck the football the, uh, the communication now uh, coming down and uh, uh, Dave Perry uh, who set up instant replay with the Big Ten is in our booth uh, Dave talk to me about where we stand with instant replay is it successful where are we here uh, all across the country Go ahead, Dave. Again, Brent, uh, it's been very successful all across the country. People like it. Uh, it has not intruded on the game very much. And we're averaging about one replay per game. Uh, for every three shutdowns, uh, we probably change one. Uh, so I think it uh, has been successful. Uh, the challenge ahead of us, of course, is to finalize a system so that all our conferences, uh, no matter where the game is played, who's officiating it, uh, it will be the same product. So uh, again, I think overall uh, high marks. Uh, we had uh, 11 conferences doing it this year, a couple of tweaks here and there, but uh, overall again, well done. After review, video evidence shows that the pass was not complete. The receiver never had possession. Incomplete pass. We will have fourth down on the 23 yard line. 225. Tried to tuck it, didn't cleanly come down with it, and had a huge break on that long third down play in return. Thank you. <laughs> had the catch against Michigan, but they'll remember the drop here. Well, let's go back on what uh, on what Dave Perry was telling us, and there you could see the system work. There was there was no question that the young man never had control of the ball. And uh, I know if you're an ardent Notre Dame fan, that hurts right now as you try to uh, climb back in the game. And uh, Josh Houston on the field with those two blocked kicks. And we'll try to get one up, and they have just poured in from that left side. And we, we, we will watch and see if they have bolstered it. Hamby missed one right here. And then the other one came power right over the big offensive line right there, the stout right side. Got this one up. Beautiful. So one of three, and it's a big one. 24 to 13. Buckeyes lead the Fighting Irish. It'll be Notre Dame's turn next. Back for the fourth quarter. And uh, the Irish uh, skill players uh, over there huddled around uh, Coach Weiss, the, uh, the line ready to go, and uh, they come out right to the line of scrimmage. This is second down. Just across midfield. Quick pass to Stovall, and Hawk rides him out of bounds. He would not give him the first down. Uh, you know, we want to talk about Jim Trussell and uh, what he has meant to the Ohio State program uh, coming in and uh, leading uh, a lot of John Cooper's recruits to a national championship and then his own recruits he's come back here to a Tostitos Fiesta Bowl co-champion of the Big Ten he's done a wonderful job he's, with Ohio he has State sold Ohio State to Ohio State football players they believe in it they believe in it. it's important and that is why they win these tight games and they're playing with so much more passion than they were in years past he's done a great job of that the man who popularized sweater vests in the state of Ohio. 
Third down and six. Empty backfield for Quinn. Can't find anybody open. Slips the tackle. Got a corner, but he won't get the first down because of you-know-who. These defenders, A.J. Hawk, the ringleader. And the quarterback's uh, sister saying, you got to go. Keep going. Yeah, A.J. Hawk had Darius Walker right there, but as A.J. comes back in, Walker is wide open. A.J. makes the hit, but if Brady Quinn would have kept his eyes downfield, he could have just flipped it right over him. A.J. Hawk, Darius Walker was 15 yards in the open. Not going to gamble at this point. Still a long way to go. Not a good punt. Here comes again. Looking for daylight down at the uh, 32. You just hold your breath if uh, if you're a Notre Dame uh, player on the sideline or a fan. Anytime number seven touches the ball tonight, he has been the difference in this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Ted Ginn, well over 200 yards of total offense here tonight for the Buckeyes. A big difference, the speed of the Buckeyes against Notre Dame. Coming at you again. Just dancing and prancing his way to a few more yards behind what has been an outstanding performance by the Buckeye offensive line. Brandon Hoyt making this now. And we uh, check in down below with Jack. Well, guys, you know you talk about the Charlie Weiss with Brady Quinn relationship. There is a relationship between Jim Tressel and Troy Smith. They say they each have each other on a speed dial. Well, early in the season, you would hear the coach instructing Troy Smith. Well, in that last series, it was Troy Smith conferring with his head coach. Let's see what happens. They were trading ideas. Second and five here. This is Pittman for the first down and breaking almost free. Zivakowski has saved a couple of touchdowns here today. The young man who was a, uh, a Golden Gloves boxer. Watch Mangold this time. The center, he just drives a nose tackle. Landry right into the ground. Did a great job of just anticipating the charge up front and just kind of pushing the guy on the ground and letting him basically block himself. That's that smartness of Mangold. He's been there forever. He's seen it all. He calls out all the protections and the blocking schemes. So Tom Zibikowski, the safety, gets ready now for Troy Smith. And the Buckeyes, they're in midfield with a first down. Out of bounds, and uh, we spoke about Zibikowski's uh, boxing career, and we asked him about it. Pretty much out of track of my mother to let me fight. You know, she didn't want her youngest son getting punched in the face all the time, so I had to convince her to let me box. And, you know, we told her, uh, I want to learn the basics. I just want to, you know, get uh, you know get the fundamentals there, not a punch. And then, 80 fights later, you know, that's kind of where my career's taken me. 80 fights later and never knocked down. Yes, he has been beaten us several times, but he's never been knocked down. Knocked out two of his opponents, he told us. And uh, he never even had to take a uh, standing eight count in Golden Gloves competition. Here's Ted Ginn back at tailback right here again. This is where they put him in motion and direct snap it. Here's Ginn. Zivakowski comes, you know, his roommate is Zamarja. So I, I, I had to ask this question, folks. Without thinking about it, spell your roommate's last name. I say M-A-R-D-Z-I-J-A. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> he was an option quarterback, and uh, there's Zamarja. Fine, fine young men who are... Uh, who are suffering today because they're on the losing end of that 24-13 score right now. But uh, regardless of what happens here today, it has been a revival for the Fighting Irish. And uh, they ran into a, uh, a defensive Bearcat in this game. I, I am firmly convinced that uh, Charlie Weiss didn't have any idea as to how good the Buckeyes were defensively. You know, in the NFL, you play the same fellows every year. And you get a couple of cracks at them. And you get an idea about the talent until you're on the field. And you're looking at players and you experience, you really don't know. And uh, as you go along, uh, I'm sure you learn. 
That was three straight runs to the left, and that's the first time Notre Dame has been able to stop that isolation play to the left. Third down. Four wide. And Smith bounces outside on the run, throws Hall. First down and then some. Troy Smith is one of the best college quarterbacks in America. He is amazing when he bounces and on the run can throw a strike like that. First and ten of the six. 24-13, and Smith and the Buckeyes threatening again. <laughs> Tressel gives his assistants, uh, Joe Daniels and Jim Bowman, all the credit. They're upstairs in the booth. But, folks, that's the man who's in charge of this offense. And... Uh, We'll, we have a soundbite on what he does with the defenses on the field. We'll, we'll let you listen to that before we uh, shut it down here tonight. Second down. Near Smith. And deflected. It was, uh, it was like a tennis player poaching. And it's Abi Amiri. Victor Abi Amiri, number 95. Outstanding football player. Fine, fine defensive end. That's one of those short passes that... that when you're a defensive end, if you can't get there, you have to get your hands up, and it's exactly what I believe Mary did that time. Now remember, a field goal here for Ohio State makes it a 14-point game. See how Tressel calls this. I would love to see Ryan Hamby catch a touchdown pass. Nothing against the Irish, but I go back to that Texas game where that young man dropped one. He's been injured, struggled a little bit this year. He brought the play in from Tressel's sideline. Quarterback draw is what they want. Spinning short of the first down. I think Jim Trestle looked at that score and said, if I get a three-pointer, it's 27-13. Remember, he won a national championship with defense and kicking game. He may be running the spread, but he still knows how to manage that game clock. He's a very good game management coach. Wouldn't you want to put it ahead of 14, though? Well, I'd take a touchdown if I could, but he's not going to risk an interception. Three points are very important to him right now. Well, my quarterback's got a couple of touchdown passes already. And we got two turnovers, too. And he's got no interceptions. <laughs> Fourth well, down, this, this is a 26-yarder now. More than three. Well, they blocked two field goals today. they got to get this one up. They got the last one up. He did. He's put it on 14. It's still... Two scores. Notre Dame very much alive in this football game. And he's excited right now. Four down territory. This is third down coming up for Notre Dame. They need two touchdowns. Down by 14. 7.03 to go. At the Buckeye 25 yard line. Set the back out. Goes to the end zone. Incomplete, and his uh, intended target down there was uh, was very well covered. Walker had broken free the underneath running back, and I'm surprised that he didn't hit him for a first down. Ohio State ran a nice combo in and out coverage against Notre Dame, and as Zamarja went to the corner, he thought that he was not the intended receiver and just stopped on the play. I think Brady Quinn misread that and threw to the wrong guy. Here's fourth down and eight for Weiss and the Irish. Must get inside the 17-yard line. Stovall hangs on. First down, Notre Dame. Sally couldn't jar it loose. It's first and goal. The only reason that play worked is Brady Quinn had to get out of the pocket and then get his eyes downfield. Stovall's right here. He comes out. Ohio State does not blitz. They sit back. Four-man rush. Roll up corner. Stovall knows he's not open deep, so he stops. Brady Quinn sees him and delivers the high ball. And as he let that ball go, he, oh, that could have been roughing the passer and should have been roughing the passer by Quinn Pitcock. Absolutely. You've got to protect your quarterbacks in that situation. 
NFL would not have hesitated. Flag would have flown. First and goal inside the 10. Diving incomplete, and a penalty flag is thrown. Yeah, against the defense, it's half the distance here from about the eight and a half yard line. I think the ball was in the air when Zamarja was jammed. Interesting whether they call pass interference or holding on the play. It's that play action pass trying to hit Zamarja behind the linebackers. Jim Trestle's defense tonight uh, taking a page out of the New England Patriots defensive playbook banging away at the uh, at the wide receivers like they did in Indianapolis on the defense number 51 penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul at the two yard line first and goal yeah that'll go down to the two yard line now watch Samarja comes inside and the ball will be in the air when he gets jammed it's Slagle who pushes Samarja and that's good call that was pass interference absolutely the ball was the ball was in the air you can't touch him at that point and he might have caught that ball now can the Irish score we've got 621 left here in the fourth and then the question about uh, the extra point remember they've missed one already tonight here's Walker he's been the touchdown man but not this time the Buckeyes jam it Every yard a struggle against Hawk and the Buckeye defense. Charlie Weiss looking at the clock, understanding that he has to get that ball in because he needs two touchdowns, brings back in his spread look. Grimes checks in. Walker is uh, out of the game. Second down and goal under pressure, incomplete. Didn't have a chance because boring in David Patterson coming off the line at the Irish quarterback. And to watch Bobby Carpenter, unable to play tonight, uh, broke his ankle on the first defensive play of the game against uh, Michigan, but uh, right in the heart of things down there. The senior, last time he'll suit up for Ohio State. His daddy played in the uh, in the NFL. Rob Carpenter. He's here in attendance tonight. Three tight end in look right here. Remember they went wide side the other way last time. Will they run the tight end? They're going to toss in that direction to Walker. Walker barges for the end zone. No signal yet. Just short. Fourth down and goal. It has come to this for the Irish. And it also takes valuable time off that clock again. Remember last time they went wide. This time they toss it. Looks like Walker's going to be able to get in. Kudla turns it back in. And then back into those linebackers. The ball. A.J. Hawk makes close. an unbelievable play. A.J. Hawk dove in low on that replay. Yes, he was. Question Did that ball break the plane? They're going to get They're a review. Take of a it. look at yep, it. They are. Replay wants to take a look at this. Gary, did you think it broke the plane? I, at first glance, I couldn't tell. I could see it close enough that they would go to replay. Remember that plane, just the nose of the ball, has to touch that plane. Goes up and did that ball get over it? Let's look at it again. Looks like we're right down the line here. We're looking at it. Hawk low, stops him. The ball is ripped a bit, and then that angle, boy, that looks, from this angle, looks like it's touching that plane to me. Is it conclusive, though? That's the question. Indisputable. Yep. Uh, video evidence is what we look for. So uh, they must decide that it's uh, indisputable. Hold on. Wow. So 27 19. And the Irish fans are celebrating. He'll say go for one and why not? Buckeyes have left them right in the thick of this. The block 
field goals have really kept Notre Dame in this football game. And the turnover, when they got down there on first and goal on the option play, when, no, when Ohio State had control of this game. Now remember, Notre Dame has missed an extra point in this game. Fitzpatrick. So they're going to uh, settle up the uh, the time situation. Oh, we have Dave Perry here, and uh, Dave, you've had a monitor, you've looked at it. Did the fellow to replay both make the right decision? Was it a touchdown? From what I saw, I think it was Brent. Uh, if he breaks any piece of that goal line plane all the way to the sky, it's a touchdown. It appeared a piece of the ball got in. Hence, we have a touchdown. And again, why replay is so valuable and so important. Yeah, it comes at a critical time in this game. You're absolutely, absolutely right. Gary, I, that's I think you thought. That's two of them today, too. We had the fumble on Gonzalez, and then this one now. So they're getting the clock. And uh, wow, that's, uh, was that around 30 seconds they got? He put 32 seconds back up on the clock. I, I don't know if we had the clock matted on that play to see where it was. Now Fitzpatrick, and it's critical, and he drills that one right down the heart of South Bend. Hang on, folks. If you're Notre Dame, it can't hurt. To have one of your Heisman Trophy winners, Tim Brown, standing on the sideline. It's 27 20, 5 27 to go in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Last Notre Dame player to win it. And a great career as a receiver also in the National Football League. Ball is on the tee. Seven and four back deep. You know who that is. And this is four. Holmes drops it at the one and picks it up. Down at the 15 yard line where it'll be first down now. So Zibikowski and the Irish defenders have to hold because Troy Smith has thrown for 317 yards and he's run for another 69. And Jim Tressel is going to open with the fullback, not the spread. Going to try to work the clock with Pittman. It'll be second down and long. <laughs> Tally and Zibikowski. See, here's the problem when you run the spread all game and you're wide open with reverses and comebacks and long passes when you need to milk the cow of clock. Now does the spread, do you have confidence? Do you believe in it? And will you call the same type of play? That's the challenge. Smith is 17 of 25 for the evening. Smith had lots of time and uh, deflected incomplete. Third down doesn't get much bigger than this. Base 4 3 for the Irish. Smith to throw out of it on the swing as he got the first down, he does. On third and long, they swing it to Pittman for a Buckeye first down. You know, Troy Smith is some maturing quarterback. You know what you like about this throw is he didn't guide it. He saw a wide open Pittman. He comes on the option to fake the option, and Pittman runs a little bit of a wheel route to the outside. And as he sees him crowded downfield, he throws a strike to him right in stride and allows Pittman to dive across for the first down. A lot of times you get a guy that open like basketball. He just can't make that throw or shot. He delivered it. He sure did. First and ten. Irish sent some linebackers this time. And uh, Pittman struggles for a yard plus. 
folks, if uh, they they put their uh, average up on the board, uh, Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush uh, for the Trojans and Vince Young for well, about 100 points uh, scored in that wow. game. I don't think we'll have that many, but we could get up into the 70s on that one easily if they go up and down the field. Second down and long now for the Buckeyes. They lead it by seven. Troy wants to run and he's going nowhere. Yeah. They couldn't open a hole and number 66 Derek Landry the fine defensive tackle makes the stop. And uh, so uh, That's you know, what you here, we, do. here we go again the third down and long and this one about uh, third and 11. You got to hand it to Derek Landry hasn't made a lot of plays inside but as a nose tackle type guy you got to keep, keep working and working and working and maybe in the fourth quarter you make that play that makes a difference. That was a quarterback draw and he refused to be blocked. Buckeyes need to go to a 37 yard line for a first down. They need a good 11 yards. In trouble dances away. Here comes the dangerous Troy Smith fires. Did he get it again? He did. My oh my. The wizard Troy Smith has come up with another one. He should have been sacked. Michigan is saying I see you. I hear your pain Notre Dame. The same thing happened to us. Nobody open. Nobody there. Should have been sacked right there. He turns around and keeps his eyes downfield. Finds who else? Anthony Gonzalez again for a huge first down. And what a play by number 11. He was in the middle of the field, stacked up with the linebackers when he saw what Smith was going to do. He ad libbed to the outside, and Troy Smith found him beautifully. How can you keep your calm eyes downfield when you make one of those spins like that? That's amazing by Troy Smith. Now the Irish must stop. They have a corner blitz, and the Bucks run right to it. Daylight, end zone ahead. Pittman, touchdown, game over. 60 yards. Buckeyes strike with the big plays. Four of them. And they will go home again with the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl trophy. It'll be their third win here. One of them, of course, resulting in a national championship in an overtime win over Miami, a second over Kansas State, and now here tonight against Notre Dame. 146 to go, and now. The point that will put this on 54. That's one of the best clutch plays I've seen by a quarterback in a long time. One year ago when the Ohio State Buckeyes went to their bowl game, that man, Troy Smith, had to stay home for violating NCAA rules and taking money from a booster. All year he thought about it, tried to win back the admiration of his team. He told us before the game, guys, that this was going to be redemption day. Looks like it has. Absolutely, Jack. And uh, Troy Smith... The orchestrator of a big play offense today. Four Buckeye touchdowns longer than 55 yards. An amazing performance here. Big play Buckeye night in Tempe. Well, the, the thing that everybody should leave with if you're a Notre Dame fan is, is what a wonderful year this was, regardless of what happened here tonight. Uh, I know it will stretch that bowl losing streak to eight. And, uh, I know that uh, disappointment, sadness at not winning, uh, but uh, Charlie Weiss and that uh, coaching staff took the first step back. Uh, they've already recruited an outstanding class. Uh, Brady Quinn uh, hits Walker, and uh, Whitner is there. That's short of a first down with uh, a minute and a half now left here in the uh, in the desert. And for uh, Jim Trussell and the uh, and the Buckeyes, when the uh, when those summer polls come out in the early. Preseason magazines. Uh, Troy Smith has just elevated himself into a Heisman Trophy uh, candidacy for next year. Absolutely. And the Buckeyes could be the number one or two ranked team. We'll see what happens um, the next few BCS games. They're going to be very, very highly rated as we uh, check back 
on this game plan. They did indeed spread for speed. And that's exactly what it was. They by Ohio State moving that ball all over the field from the spread formation. Notre Dame was not able to handle it. And you know, the deep ball. Notre Dame has made a living on the deep ball. Stovall and Samarja do not catch a touchdown pass in the game. Stops the clock momentarily on the first down with 40 seconds to go. You go back to that last drive. Pittman's 60 yard touchdown run, of course, buried the Irish. But Troy Smith faced a third and nine and a third and 11 prior to that touchdown, and he converted both for Coach Jim Trussell. And there he is down there in his uh, sweater vest, calmly uh, surveying the scene. When we talked to the coaching staff, I had the feeling that he was extremely confident about this game I had the feeling because he would played several of the Big Ten teams uh, that had been in the arena with Notre Dame he looked at the tapes he knew that personnel I think he felt he could move the ball big time and of course Troy Smith uh, delivered the rest and, and he's one of those very heartwarming stories uh, folks he comes from a very tough tough background uh, he's lived a hard life and he's been given a chance and uh, starting to show trust in his coaches uh, starting to make the right decisions it's the kind of story you just love to see in college football and folks if you're ever on a playground and he's playing he's a first round draft choice right there now look who's going to get the bath and uh, uh -oh. Carpenter's going to help deliver it. Mr. Straight Lace himself <laughs> he noticed Jack's collar and he's going to get a Gatorade. <laughs> Can they get him. Oh he oh, got him. They oh. got him. <laughs> but you had to hold him up Gary. Yeah, Rob to Sims get him. had him. Let me tell you. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, mercy. Big hug there with Troy Smith. Bobby Carpenter, I know he's terribly disappointed about not playing tonight. He'll get a chance to uh, play Sunday football uh, next year. Uh, just, a, just a fine story. Notre Dame faces another one of those uh, tough schedules next year, but uh, they're going to be exciting. Their television ratings over on NBC, way, way up, I noticed, uh, this season. Sellout crowds in South Bend. Charlie Weiss looks like he was the right man for the right job. And uh, so Notre Dame uh, enjoyed a great season, even though they're going to lose here tonight to the Buckeyes. Got a timeout call by uh, Notre Dame. Gary, it's our last game. You and uh, Jack Aroot, Steve Bond, Bob Goodrich, Mike Pearl down in the truck, and uh, just everybody. Uh, George Hill up here with the stats. Brian Mobelson, of course, our spotter all year long. And uh, we want to thank the cameramen. Uh, the TD, Mr. High Def himself, and uh, for all the great work they did during the season. Well, covered it pretty good, but nothing prettier than this last touchdown, Brent. Five great blocks. Mangold, Sims, Daddish, White, and then watch the big play guys downfield. The left side, everybody gets their block, and then watch this. Number four, Santonio San Holmes. He just doesn't catch passes. And number seven, right there, Ted Ginn. Gets his block. How about that? Finish that off a football game like that. That is beautiful. I've got about 415 somewhere around there for Troy Smith here tonight, and maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe just right over 400 yards passing and uh, and running tonight. Uh, Troy Smith, the player of the match, no no question about that. And Brady Quinn being sacked again the fifth time. Mike Kudla in his last game for the Buckeyes and uh, now Jim Trussell wanting the, uh, the clock to uh, tick away. He'll go out and uh, congratulate Charlie on the season he's had. Charlie stands over there like he just wants another series. Ohio State. Man the desert should bring the Buckeyes down here more often. They'd have a winning team. They own this place. So the celebration. The third festival win in four years. Let's go down to Jack and Root. Jack. Well, Coach, you gave me a collar stay here. You got all wet before the game. I'm going to give you a towel. What was the difference in that second half for your team? You know, it was a battle. You know, Notre Dame does a great job. They play hard. They got great kids. And, you know, we just kept fighting and kept fighting. The guys making plays. And, 
so proud of the senior class. They won a lot of games and done some special things. I know Troy Smith said before the game that he wanted to make this a redemption game for the mistakes he made in missing last year's bowl. Has he redeemed himself? Well, he redeemed himself a long time ago with me. He's a special kid. I love him, and, and uh, he's my guy. So he, he did plenty of redemption. Troy Smith, congratulations. Redemption time. Tell me a little bit about your game tonight. What was the difference? Oh, man, just sending the seniors out with a win. That's what every person on the team set out to do today. You know, again, I want to give thanks to God because without him, none of this is possible. But sending the seniors out with a win today, that was our main focus. Congratulations, man. Thanks, baby. Thanks. So Troy Smith and the Buckeyes win it 34-20 over the Fighting Irish.